Hey, welcome back to Guillotine 18th Century Chemist Theater. We are going to wrap up our theory, or our, our unit on modern atomic theory, by talking about the concept of electron affinity. And again, as I, as I teased at the end of last video, uh, affinity stands for how much you like something. Again, so if somebody walks up to you and says, I have a strong affinity for you, it's really just their way of saying they like you. That's nice. And so uh, affinity regards how much an atom wants an electron. Now, the equation for this uh, looks very similar to the ionization energy, but in this type case, you have an atom that's gaining an electron, and then they become some kind of anion, and they're going to release energy. So the energy is on the product side this time because you're releasing energy. That means it's exothermic. Now, again, just like um, atom or ion, you could do the same thing for an uh, for an, uh, an ion gaining an additional electron. You know, so for instance, oxygen could gain one electron, and then it could gain a second electron to get a full valence shell. So you, you can certainly have different types of affinity for gaining more electrons. Um, all electron affinity values are either zero or negative. And this is where it gets a little confusing because uh, we measure affinity by how much energy is given off uh, when it gets that electron and becomes more stable. Because remember, the idea of gaining electrons increases the stability of an atom. So something like beryllium uh, doesn't really want uh, extra electrons and so it's not going to have much of an affinity for them. So if you put an electron on beryllium, the electron will just sort of roll off it. It's not really interested in more electrons. Sort of like if you're not a cat lover and somebody puts a cat on your lap, you'll probably just kind of let the cat slide off your lap. You're really not that interested in having a cat there. But if you're a cat lover and someone puts a cat on your lap, you're going to become very stable. You're going to enjoy that process. And so fluorine would be the example of something like that. Fluorine really wants an electron, and so when you give it an electron, it becomes much more stable and it gives off a lot of energy. Right? And so it really, you have to be very careful about how you want to talk about this. Um, are you going to talk about the numeric value for electron affinity? In that case, uh, the, more, uh, the more it wants an electron, the more negative the energy change is going to be. Or you could talk about the overall strength. You know, fluorine, although it has a very negative energy change, uh, has a very strong affinity for electrons. So just be careful about how you're um, defining affinity. Again, is it just the concept of how badly it wants electrons, or are you talking about the energy that's given off once it gets that electron? And so the vertical trend for this uh, is, again, as the radius gets bigger, uh, you would imagine that it's tougher to get a hold on electrons. So you could imagine that the uh, it has less of an affinity for new electrons, which means that the numeric value for the measurement of it is actually going to increase and become closer to zero. Because again, when it gains electrons, it gives off less energy and less energy and less energy until it's not giving off energy, energy at all for new electrons. So again, you just have to be careful about how you define it. Is the affinity going down or is the affinity going up? Well, it depends on how you define affinity. Um, again, if it's the numeric value, uh, it's going to be coming, uh, as you go up a family, it's going to be coming more positive because it's giving less and less energy away. Uh, but if it's the overall affinity, the affinity for electrons also goes down as you go up a family. So again, it's, it's, you know, it's a little confusing, but just take your time and you will, uh, you'll have that understood. And so the horizontal trend is exactly what you might think it would be. As I go left to right, remember my radius is getting smaller, which means new electrons can get closer to the nucleus, which means that uh, you should see affinity climb. The, the desire for electrons should increase, which means the numeric value of the measurement of it in kilojoules per mole will decrease and become more negative, peaking out with fluorine, as we talked about before. I think it was a negative 329 kilojoules per mole. And so really what you want to do is uh, you want to look at the trends of affinity and ionization energy and tie that back to the concept of radius. So make sure you understand the vertical and horizontal trends for radius and then uh, just go ahead and apply those to affinity or ionization energy as you see fit. Uh, so I guess that pretty much wraps up what we're doing. So uh, hey, thanks for watching and uh, have a great day. Just kidding, we we, we going to have to wrap up our dialogue here, but I'll step out of the way.
<laughs> I know that was a big battle for that joke, but oh well, what can you do? Anyway. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.